everyone, and welcome back to the Influence Report. It's really exciting to be back again. I know it's been a few weeks since we chatted last. Uh, today I have with us Jeff Bickle, one of our level designers. Nice to be here. He has a Squire shirt on. Uh, yes, sir, I do. <laughs> I love the Squire shirt. Um, so this is an opportunity for us to chat with you about all the things you're discussing on the forums, go through the new votes we're running, results from the old votes on our Influence system, and really just in general discuss how you're influencing our game. So let's jump right into it and get started. All right. So uh, first up, we're going to go through the different votes, uh, sorry, the different forum threads that people have going on right now. And uh, to start, we're going to talk about incursion hard mode. And some people believe that the loot, the rarity drops on hard mode is actually worse than normal mode. You get less legendaries on hard than normal. Is that is that true? No, I, I've run I'm, some tests on this. Yeah. I've gone the editor. I've looked at both values. They are 100% completely identical. Right, which is the design, right? Right, that is... Intended. Right, so unless there's some really weird random bug that we haven't figured out quite yet, uh, you're just getting hit by the random chance, and you know that's the way random works sometimes. That said, this is a difference from DD1 to DD2 on how we're dealing with the loot drop, so why are we making that change? Well, in DD1, as you advanced in difficulty, you would get higher rarity gear. Here right. we wanted to uh, give you the same rarity spread, so a legendary is always the same chance, but uh, on harder modes, spawn them with better stats. Right. So whenever you're, I actually really like this system because when you're playing on the harder difficulties, you get a much higher number, or not much higher, but a higher number that can roll on the, on the items, right? Right. About 10%. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. So um, I like that system. We've talked about it a lot, but really it's really what you guys like. Um, as we've been discussing this comment uh, from the forums and these threads you guys are talking about, we've actually been thinking that maybe we should do an influence vote on this. So we're going to discuss that some more internally and maybe bring that out to you guys sometime in the future. Do you think that's a good idea? Uh, yeah, I think players would really uh, have a vested interest in getting rewarded for hard mode. So. Right. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Maybe you'll see an influence vote about that sometime down the road. Uh, the next topic that we're going to discuss is basically a resist system. Uh, so we, most of you guys are familiar. We have uh, resists uh, on the different lanes, mm -hmm. physical and magical. And every time we play the game, the lane layout changes. So it's different every time. Mm -hmm. uh, why did we decide to do that? Why did we make a change uh, We time? wanted to present players with unique challenges every time they play. Uh, increase replayability by sort of varying gameplay. Right. And that's, I think that's a good thing. But one of the comments that we're getting from people is, you know, some of the ones might be easier than the others, so you could just reload the map over and over again until you get the easy one, and then away you go. Oh uh, Well, some of the things we wanted to do is take a look at our reward schedules, things like that. Uh, make sure your five minutes is spent or better spent playing the game rather than, than reloading, reloading over and over. Right. right. And that's been a big discussion based on this, this forum thread. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad you guys have brought that up to us. We're talking about it. We also recognize maybe some of our enemy layouts could be adapted to be better. You know, we, we added enemies like the Draken into the game to help mm -hmm. flesh that out. But I think the physical and magic where this enemy still aren't as great as they could be when it comes to right. making every one of those layouts exciting. So bear with us as we add it's there. something we're working on. Yep. yep. And then I love that there's another version of the game that we have uh, or another version of the game mode called Wave Director that really mm -hmm. takes this problem completely away. I love talking about Wave Director. It's this opportunity for the game to dynamically change every time you play it and while you play. So every wave, it's reacting to you being devious and trying to pay attention to where you're building and where you're fighting and doing different things around that. Uh, you know, it's not ready yet for prime time. We're working on it really soon. Can't wait till you guys have to be able to play that. And to be honest, this keeps on coming up. Maybe we create another game mode that is more static. You know, yeah, sort of a puzzle challenge. mode. Yeah, like a puzzle mode. Yeah. So um, keep talking about this as we continue to iterate and add, and um, we'll find the best path forward for the product as we go forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so last one is well, a topic that comes up a lot, which is our hero deck. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like, for the most part, people are okay with uh, for how it works in group setting, right. but they feel like they're a little bit restricted when it comes to solo play. And, um, you know, we've talked about this a lot. We were discussing it a lot. We're trying to figure out kind of the best thing to do. Uh, what was our goal here with this? Why do we, our, our you know, goal, what is our goal about the changes we may make to Hero Deck? Right. Our, our, our goal was to incentivize players uh, actually playing while they were in a public game instead, right. of, instead of having one, one player just sort of build and, and do all their uh, business. Right. But, and we really don't want to penalize right. any different gameplay mode. We yeah. don't want to penalize people for playing solo. We don't want to penalize people for playing in a group. We yeah. want people to play how they want to play. Right. So uh, one thing that is worth noting, and I know people have been talking about this, there is going to be a way for us to increase the hero deck size. Mm -hmm. uh, we always plan to do that. Right now we've started with just three, but there's going to be a mechanism where you can go to a bigger hero deck. And then we're also going to explore ways to, like Jeff said, sustain that positive experience for group play while still facilitating the choices that people want in solo play. Uh, we're going to talk to you guys about that. We're going to find the right way to do it. And um, 
look for those iterations as we go. So we're hearing it loud and clear, and uh, we're going to keep iterating on that until we find the best experience for all different play styles. So that kind of wraps up our forum discussion. Yep. Let's go right into the influence vote. All right. I love talking about influence votes. Uh, so first, let's talk. Let's wrap up what happened last time. Yeah. We uh, had the incursion vote. Yep. And uh, Gridlock ran away with it. Yeah. So I have the numbers here. Uh, Tuscar was at four thousand nine hundred seventy-eight votes, and Griblock was at seven thousand nine hundred eighty-four vote. Eighty-four votes. That means that it's kind of. It's an anagram, I think. Yep, that's an anagram. That's right. All the numbers are the same for both. But I, I wonder if someone did that on purpose. Like that's, at the end, they were trying to tweak the yeah. numbers. That'd be really funny. Remember the Illuminati man? <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Uh, but really cool. So uh, good luck, one. Mm -hmm. um, do you? You were telling me earlier that, that kind of surprised you. Yeah, it, it did. I, I thought that you know Tuscar had some some really cool, interesting things, and and Griblock was sort of hordes of enemies. Right. Right. And you know. From what we got from players, they wanted to see hordes of enemies. Right. So uh, I don't have, uh, I'm really not sure exactly when Grid Boss will be coming forward. It's on our schedule now to be the next incursion mode that we make. So stay tuned as we start working on that and hopefully releasing some stuff soon. Um, so that's the last vote. Now yep. let's talk about the new one. All right. And I'm really excited to tell you guys about this. Uh, basically, the next vote is about Onslaught, which is our version of survival. Mm -hmm. And people have been asking for this forever. Yep. Almost a year, I think. Yeah, probably about survival, that. Survival, yeah. maybe even longer than that. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about survival and how the reward structure works? All right, well, Onslaught is our uh, endless round-based survival. Mm -hmm. And then after every successful round, uh, players will receive loot. Right, they'll get a reward chest of some kind. Yes. Right. So um, what this vote is going to be focused on is how you decide or um, how you influence how those reward chests uh, or what's inside those reward chests. So one idea we have is it's like this is the one that's most convenient. Mm -hmm. um, it's a time saver. You basically, when the, when the match starts, you pick the kind of reward that you want um, or the kind of reward that you want to see, whether it be you know weapons or armors or relics or maybe this new feature we're working on called pets. Yep. Whichever one is pets. Just um, maybe. Maybe. And uh, once you set that, then you go through survival, you play wave after wave after wave, and uh, the, the chance of the rewards in the chest being towards that decision are a lot higher. That's kind of what you're going to be focused on. Another option that we've talked about is more giving you choice on every single wave. So the min max can go through and decide, um, you know, at the end of a wave, there's multiple chests, one that might have armor or, or weapons or whatever, and you can only open one of them. And we think both systems are kind of cool. The problem with the, you know, not the problem, but the, the thing that can make the chess thing the choice every single time is that that's really time intensive. Yeah, I mean, especially four players, public game, like, you know, that can that can take a while, especially over several rounds. Yes, and, and endless mm -hmm. goes endlessly. Yeah, endless can go on for a while. <laughs> yes, so we have an option here that is, you know, convenience and really allows you to save a little bit of time and pick something that still controls what you, you get, but makes it a lot more mm -hmm. easier to deal with, and one where you can choose every single time and masters can figure out what they want to do. We've had a lot of debates internally. Really? Quite a few. <laughs> We're not sure which one is the best experience. We can see both sides being valuable. And just like you guys were discussing with us for our last previous influence votes, we're no longer going to ask you, or we're trying not to come to you questions on what mm -hmm. we build next. We're trying to come to you with questions on what's important or what decisions right. we need to make that are a little bit more challenging for us. So mm -hmm. this is going to come out there. It's a big choice that we need to make. We're really looking forward to you guys influencing that choice. And uh, hopefully you'll see that in the influence system here, probably by the time this video goes out in the next day or so. Yeah. So let us know. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm really curious to see how that turns out. Yeah. So that wraps it up for our influence report today. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us yeah. today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back hopefully in the next week or so. We can talk about the new, uh, hopefully, how our awards is going to work for Onslaught and um, a whole bunch of other cool new topics that you guys are discussing. So thanks a lot. Have a great time playing Dungeon Defenders 2. We'll see you next time. Yeah.